Does this bother you? What if you had to pay to make it go away? We often assume that all the information on the internet is equally accessible. It's not quite as simple as that, but this ideal is the basis of net neutrality. It's an issue that's been on the agenda in the U.S. for years, but it actually affects people all over the world. Here's the problem. Without net neutrality, your internet service provider, or ISP, such as BT or Comcast, could influence what you see and how quickly you see it. In order for you to watch YouTube, browse Facebook, or read the news, you need an ISP to connect you to that content. Net neutrality demands that ISPs should treat all web traffic the same. Let's think about that in terms of real traffic. The ISPs are like the road between Tech City, where companies like Amazon and Google are based, and Consumerville, where you live. These companies have to send information along the road, which is owned by the ISP. Currently, vehicles from Google and vehicles from a small company travel on the same road at the same speed. The ISP cannot favor one over the other, so the Google van cannot overtake its competitor's little car. But imagine the road is converted into a highway with a fast and slow lane. To access the fast lane, companies have to pay the ISP more money. This favors big companies who can afford to pay. Some companies might even be denied access to the road altogether. It would be the ISP's choice. Without net neutrality, the ISP highway has stopped treating all traffic the same. What does this mean for you? Well, without net neutrality, you might find some services slow down unless your favorite sites pay the ISPs. This has happened before. In 2014, before net neutrality regulations were enshrined in law in the US, Comcast customers noticed Netflix streaming speeds plummeting. It wasn't until Netflix agreed to pay Comcast more money that streaming speed shot up again. It could also lead to higher prices for you. ISPs could charge premium prices for people who want to watch a video or listen to music at peak times. And if companies are forced to pay for the fast lane, the price increase might be pushed back onto the consumer. That means you could end up paying more to browse your favorite sites. You might even notice a decrease in the quality of content. While larger companies can afford to pay up for better service delivery, smaller companies may not be able to keep up. Less competition means less pressure to improve products and services. And if smaller companies fold, the consumer will have less choice. ISPs could choose to slow down content of any kind. Let's take the business's streaming video. If Netflix makes an arrangement with an ISP, the ISP could block Netflix's competitors from reaching customers. Many ISPs have started their own streaming services. They could favor their own content and block competitors out completely. And it's not just about business. They could also censor content that they disagree with. ISPs argue that if there was less regulation and they were able to charge a premium for faster service, they could reinvest the money in better infrastructure. This could include improved access for people in remote and rural areas. If popular services like YouTube are putting more strain on the ISP's network, it makes sense for them to pay more anyway. Right? But YouTube would say it's not their job to improve the internet, just as it's not BMW's job to build better roads. What's more, many argue that any extra money paid to ISPs would really just go into the pockets of shareholders. One thing's certain, net neutrality creates a level playing field which spurs innovation. Small companies can easily challenge competitors which motivates them both to improve their products. Small startups have a fighting chance to grow and even surpass their big rivals. That's how Facebook rose from humble origins in Mark Zuckerberg's university dorm room to domination over market leader MySpace. ISPs also argue that any consumers who don't like the way they operate can always choose to switch providers. But it's not that simple. Many people only have access to adequate broadband from one internet provider in their area. Without net neutrality, that one ISP could have a lot of control over what those consumers get to see online. So what do you think? Should net neutrality rules be protected, loosened a little, or even scrapped altogether?